Hey guys, it's the Bold Beautiful Mini Spotlight. I'm James Hutchin, your host, and I'm going to tell you something funny. So my guest is Jordan, is Jordan, I said Jordan, Justin Torkelson. How are you talking about it? <laughs> Justin Torkelson, who played Rick Forrester back in the day. How are you doing, Justin? Good, James. How are you doing today? Thanks for having me on. So I'm going to be transparent, folks. We actually recorded an interview a few days ago, and of the 60 interviews I've done in the last two months, um, it got the system crashed. And it's that, me. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not a technology person. <laughs> it was. Because see, you haven't been in the business in a while. It's all because of you. That's why I did right, it. Exactly. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to do it. We're going to talk again because it's great. We like each other. We're going to talk again. But it's just you know, that technology does happen. And it was just kind of crazy. I'm like, I don't know why that one. I talked to Zoom and they couldn't help me and they couldn't recover it. Actually, we thought we could recover it and then it didn't really work. Yep. It's uh. It's the nature of it, you know? It happens. It's life. What can you do? <laughs> it's life. But I actually want to start off with it because I just, I actually, at the time of this interview, I just finished interviewing his ex on screen mother, um, <laughs> Kelly Lang, and she speaks highly of you and everything. So tell me a little bit about being her, being her son. You tell me a story before about how you have this hot, well, hot mama. Hot you know, mama, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, this it's a big, um, that's, I mean, that's how I met her. I screen tested with Ashley Cofania. So I hadn't met Catherine Kelly Lang or Adrian France or anybody. I, I, I came to Bold and Beautiful. I did a screen test with Ashley. I was in and out, came back to Colorado. They called me, come to Los Angeles, start working on this show. All right, I'm there. I walk in, they give me a baby and they're like, this is your mom. <laughs> I said, wait, okay, first baby, second mom. You know, I, I finished my first day at work and I'm like, guys, my mom is so hot. And my friends are like, what? And I'm like, you know, my TV mom, my new TV mom, she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is. But yeah, she's, a, she's an amazing woman. Um, it was a blessing and a pleasure to work with her all those years. Well, she talks about how all of you have become like her kids at the time. Like you guys, yeah. were like she took you in. I mean, it's like, it's yeah. like yes, right? Her and yeah, she, her um, yeah, she was very, she did. She took us in. I mean, <laughs> You know, I was really young when I got there and, and, and Jacob before me, he was really young, you know, and so we were starting in this child, this children's generation almost. We were just borderline children. We were becoming adults and we were playing that in our story too. Yeah. And she really did kind of take you under her wing, you know, and I remember, you know, her daughter Zoe, I remember hanging out with her and we'd play video games and, and her mother used to have a house, Catherine Kelly Lang's mother used to have a house in Boulder. Oh. So I would go up there for Christmas occasionally. I mean, it did, you became very close like family. You know, and like when I went to visit the set, um, what was that? End of last year, when I went drop by for a quick visit end of last year, seeing her and John McCook, it was just like going back with family, big hugs all around. Nothing's changed. How are you? And, and that's a really special thing to get from any job in the business because it's not always like that. So. Well, also, it's very interesting that you went back. It's like some people think, you know, well, you left the soap. They must like hate the soap. And I mean, but not, not you at all. You had a great time on the soap. You have great memories. Yeah, right? no, no, no. I had, I had the time of my life working on The Bold and the Beautiful. Um, you know, we talked about it before. It's, 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 it's like getting paid to go to school in a lot of ways. You practice. You get to practice your art, what you love to do every single day and make a living at it. That's a blessing. And so going back there to me, um, I'm just so thankful that that was a part of my life. And then that was really what kickstarted the first major role in my acting career, you know? Um, yeah. There couldn't have been a better place for that, yeah. for sure. Now, of course, there were rumors, because you were <laughs> on set. Yeah. It must have felt nice, at least, that fans were like, ooh, I think he's coming back. Is he coming back? Yes. He's coming back. It must have been nice, yes. because you left the role, like, 100 years ago. So, I mean, like, it's kind of nice that... Exactly. Oh, it the fans of the the fans of the bold and the beautiful are like top notch you know they 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 support i'm still in touch with so many fans from the show the people who were there for you through thick and thin people who followed me through whatever i've done and you know i took a long time off and i've done some short films i'm working on some documentaries i'm coming back but these people still stayed with me you know you have angelique you know angelique i imagine marcus there you have these groups of people you know um yoka all these people they follow you and it's 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 such a blessing and you know it was cool to see that people were still excited just seeing me go back and there was a little youtube video yes so it felt really good it, i was kind of honored <laughs> no, no seriously, no, seriously. It's, it's great that people want you back they're, they're, they're that they still hold you in high regard you know yeah. rick's after you and things like that they're like oh well 
Just go right back in. Sure, why not? Just bring it why right not? In. Why not? <laughs> why not, folks? Why not? You know, it's funny. It's like I feel like I've grown up so much. I was so young when I started there, and I was pretty young when I left there. Yeah. You know, and you know, now I'm in my late 30s, and I'm I've 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 experienced life. I've learned so much more. I, it's it definitely be a very different experience, I imagine. Do you think I, I wouldn't be so wide-eyed when I walked onto set the first time. <laughs> Well, would you, do you feel like because you've lived more life and taking time away from like Hollywood, mm. I mean, Hollywood's anywhere now at this point, but you know, Hollywood, yeah. um, do you feel like you'd be a better actor? Do you think, do you think you feel like you come back with all this kind of wealth of stuff? I absolutely do. I, I think you can kind of hit that on the head. I think um, experiencing life, going, you know, pain, loss, um, joy, unbridled joy, things that you just don't experience through your teenage years in, in, even in your early 20s, I think, in the profound way that you do, once you experience something truly, you lose a friend, you, you find the love of your life, whatever it is, that experience to be able to relay that to screen, I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing more of that. You know, I've been having fun with these short films and these things, and that's what we've been doing. It does, it helps. Life, it's experience. I mean, what is acting other than relaying your experiences in life, you know? True, True. I agree with yeah. that. Um, and you know, and, it's, and so coming back to this, the, are you? Are, or is there any kind of anxiousness coming back? Like, why now? Like, why are you? Why? <laughs> why now? You feel like it's time to come back to the world of of the actor. There, there's a little bit of anxiety, I think. Um, not so much. Okay, here's here's. I, when I left B and B, you know, I, I kind of wanted to do sort of a gap year. Kind of, I wanted to travel. I wanted to see things, and you know, I started two weeks from high school. I was on set. You know, I graduated. I'm on set. It's like okay work, 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 my life, I got married way young. My life just went crazy directions where I was like this miniature adult right, all of a sudden. Right, right. <laughs> yep. And um, so I never got to experience being younger, I guess. So yeah, I left, you know, when, when the show, when I left Bold and Beautiful, when that all that wrapped up, I traveled, I moved to Italy, I used that as a base. Some of my very best friends are in Italy. So I, you know, someone I consider a brother, staying with him and that was a base, traveled the world, met people, fell in love again, all these beautiful things. Um, but I was scared of acting, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I wasn't scared of it, I just wanted to learn more life. I wanted to live more life, I wanted more experience. And so I went out and got it, <laughs> for okay. sure. Yeah. They did, they did. Well, got it. Well. <laughs> Well, I got it <laughs> at the bell just in case I need it. I um, love it. But no, but seriously, that that is a, that's the thing you kind of. I always tell people who are creative, you actually have to live life to be creative. Like right? you can't just yeah. be in a bubble. You have to kind of go out there and yeah, knocked around a little bit, and it actually yeah. can be helpful to you. That can be helpful to you in your process. Absolutely. You know, it's it, you have some place to draw from. I, I remember how when we filmed the scenes where Rick and Amber were losing little Eric, you know, oh, uh, yeah. that was what Adrian and I won our Emmy together with. And when we were filming that material, again, I was very young. That was really hard for me because I couldn't relate. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't sit and say, I've never lost a child. I've never, I hadn't lost a parent or anything at that point. You know, it's like, it was hard to relate. I had to dig deep and it worked out. No, I mean, thank uh, God clearly. it oh, worked yeah, out, yeah. but it was hard. You know, and now I sit and I've really experienced some pain and I've really experienced real joy. And now it's like, oh, okay. It's pretty easy to pull that up and get it and make that feeling a part of you again. You know, back That's then when I was so young, it was hard. I was a pretty happy go lucky kid from Boulder, Colorado. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that. That, that. that makes sense. That totally makes sense. Now, now you can actually pull from things that from real life and go, okay, I can actually make this work in my acting choice. Yeah. That's and it's not without as much of a struggle and, you know, yeah. Well, you made it work, like clearly. Yes. What's the Emmy in a second? What's the Emmy in a second? It worked. It worked. It was. It was. It was. Adrian and I. That was. I mean, that's a whole separate. We'll we'll cover that. I'm sure. That was. Uh, working with her was one of the best experiences I'll ever have. I'm sure. She's such. A, I think. I think people. I, I hate saying that she's underrated, but I feel like she is on some level. Like. Yeah. To me, she's so royalty. People know who she is, but like, do they mm -hmm. know who she is? Like, she's so good. She's in so every good. Scene. Yeah. I yeah. Love um. I think, I think Adrian was probably the best acting teacher I've ever had, you know, just in the sense of working with her every single day, day in and day out. I learned from her, you're prepared. You come in, you're there for the job, you do your job. I learned such important things from her and just the depth of emotion she was able to draw up and 
good Lord. I mean, watching her cry when we were burying our other two babies, just I couldn't help but cry because she's crying. It's just like, oh my God, you know? Yeah. Which, which on a soap sometimes it's hard because you get these storylines you know, over and over again. You're like, <laughs> I gotta get the emotion, I gotta get the emotion. Yeah. But Where we, is it? I've already got one dead baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got 10. You know, like, what's going on? like so it's kind of like, yeah, but I guess for you to have a scene partner who is fully committed yep. must help you become yep. fully committed. So I remember I interviewed, for just for a quick little short little story, I interviewed um, Freddie Smith from Days of Our Lives. Mm -hmm. and he worked with Wally Kurth from Days of Our Lives. And he said, there was this, he goes, I'd have to act that much. I just looked at his eyes and I was in. <coughs> Bless you. Uh, he said, but he said, he looked at his eyes and then it was like, then the, the, when they said three, two, one, go, it happens. So I figured with you and Adrian must be the same yep. thing. You look, look at your eyes and you're like, okay. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah, because the eyes are the window to the soul, all that stuff they talk about. But it really is. And so, yeah, you get your action and you just, you're, you're eye to eye with this person. And you're just looking them right in the eye. And there's something so intimate about that. And then you work with someone for so many years. I mean, Adrian and I worked so closely together. We oh. traveled together. We did publicity work together together you know she was my tv wife I, I believe when i won my emmy i called her my wife by yeah. accident in that speech yeah. Yeah. i got some flack for that for a while <laughs> um i'm sure but <laughs> let's go into that real quick <laughs> right. yeah. talk about. so the one thing is the emmy so i'm like you so you're on the show like a year yeah and, a year and a half maybe <laughs> yeah and you and you get nominated and i, and I think i asked you this before but i'm kind of curious again with this i mean did you really get what the emmys were at the time did you, did you get what they were i knew what they were Yes. You know, um, I knew that they were voted, you know, and the, the Academy was involved and that it was voted by your peers. I, I, I got it, but I didn't really get it, you know, uh, in the sense of I, I'd never experienced anything like that. Yeah. I'd never been to an award. You know, I think my first I'd went to the Emmys the year before to watch. And that was my first experience, which was already mind blown. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Then, <laughs> you know, and then the next year going and being nominated. Yeah, you know, honestly, I still have a hard time wrapping my head around it, and it's 20 years later. I mean, you look shocked when you won. I, I watched it recently. You look, yes, I mean, seriously, you're like, me? I mean, laugh yeah. because there was no lighting on you at one point. It's just like, you're yeah, not gonna win. Let's go over the other one. And I always say, turn the light, they bring the lights up. Like, right, like, yep. bring the lights up, bring the lights up. And then the light, and they, there he is. Like, it was so funny how they do with that. I guess they didn't think you were going to win either. Genuine shock. I should have bet on myself in Vegas. I would have made a fortune. It was like, I was so shocked. I mean, you, you saw the reaction. I just, it, it was the culmination of so much hard work with Adrian, between Adrian and I, you know, th those are the scenes we both submitted together. We, we, we picked the same stuff, submitted it together. And that was a culmination of, again, using life experience. I mean, it was hard. I moved to Hollywood by myself. I was young. I didn't, you know, no friends. It was a very, I'd been to LA, but I never lived there permanently. So I used all that. And Adrian had her things and we built and we worked together and we shared it. And winning that, oh my God, I just... I was completely surprised and I didn't know what to say. <laughs> I wasn't wow. expecting to win, so I didn't really you, prepare. <laughs> you could tell, you could, you could totally tell, but it was, it was, it was fun, <laughs> you could totally tell. Um, now, the other thing I want to bring up is that the fact that the show is international. This is one of the few yes. soaps that literally, that's why I asked my one of the beautiful, what's it like going to Monte Carlo or Italy or, or whatever. Yeah. So, tell me your experience, Australia or somewhere, like, tell me your experience with that. It's insane. Um, the experiences we have internationally on Bold and Beautiful, our international support, I mean, it dwarfs the viewership we have in America. I mean, it, it's the, the amount of people that watch. It's crazy. And what a life experience to have. It's something that, I mean, money can't even buy, right? We're in America and people, you're in work in Los Angeles and you're on a soap and it's LA, you know, everyone gives each other space. It's not like, oh, this person that, maybe if you go to Minnesota Target or something, they're like, oh, you're Rick Forrest or whatever. But you go to Italy, or you go to Belgium or Amsterdam, you know, you go to Amsterdam or just certain, especially Italy, as I'm sure you've heard many a time, such a big place for us. Yeah. At the peak of it all, wait, you know, back in the late 90s through the early 2000s, you could not leave your hotel when you were in town. It was so crazy. Rock star. Rock, rock star. Like rock star. And, and wow. I will never experience that again in my life, probably. I mean, it was so much fun. Yeah, I'm not, sure. <laughs> not going to lie. No, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. And speaking of, just speaking of rock stars, I mean, Ron Moss. Ron Moss. 
I, and I always say that, and I said this last time, I always call him the coolest dude in the room because he just really mm -hmm. oozes it. He does. It, if Ron walks into the room, you just let go of any hopes of being the cool guy. And you yeah. say, oh, Ron's here. And I'm going to sit back. He's here. Yeah. That's it. Yep. And he's one of yeah, the nicest guys, too. And he's one of the nicest guys, too. I mean, we're just... We're yeah. He's, he's amazing. Yeah. That, you know, I was really close. Our group, it was kind of Ron... Me, you know, me and Ron at Windsor, we hung out a lot. I mean, we were the three brothers on TV, and we were kind of the three brothers out of TV. We'd finish work. If it was a family scene, we'd go over to the Grove and have dinner. We'd, you know, movies, sushi. We were really close like that. It was brothers on, brothers off kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, Ron, well, we had some good times together, and, and, and I learned a lot from him really about life. I mean, the experiences, he, the, the life stories he can share with you and the lessons you can learn from him, you're not going to find many other places. No, I had him on my show uh, years ago. We're friends now, but I had him on my show years ago. I'm friends yeah. with Devin. And, um, and just hearing the rock star stories from the yeah. 70s. Yeah, and 80s. the rock star stories make the bold and beautiful story. Yeah, exactly. Look nice. Oh, exactly. Not, yeah. Oh, exactly. I'm going to tour with Queen. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, exactly. Right, exactly. So he was telling me, obviously, like this. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Tell me more, Ron. Just tell me more. Like, yeah, oh, exactly. I, I, have show, I have a show to do. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm like, I literally was just like, please like, tell like, me more. <laughs> all right. I mean, he really did have a lot. Of, you know, no, seriously, he's a like, cool, cool dude, of course. Cool Amazing guy. man. And, Amazing and, and, man. Yeah, Susan Flannery. I yep. mean, come on. Susan, Susan um, she was a never ending source of advice and inspiration. You know, if I ever needed life advice, acting advice, I learned a lot from her when I first started. I had done some sitcom work, a lot of theater work. So everything was really big, you know. I'm projecting for the back of the room. Back of the room. That's and right. then you get in a soap opera and the camera's like right here. And you're like, uh, don't move your face so much, you know. And I'm like, Susan, how do I do this? How do I bring it down? And she's like, you know, tag endings, for instance. You have this long hold at the end. <laughs> oh, that's right. You know, and they'd call a cut. And I'd be like, sweet, let's go. And they'd be like, like nope go back all right we got to pick it up tag ending and i said susan what do i do yeah exactly and i'd say susan i'm so perplexed what do i do about this tag ending and she'd say think about your groceries think about how they screwed up your order if you're mad you know but you're not even thinking about it because it's so unnatural yeah it's like, <laughs> i don't stop and think and stare at stuff very often <laughs> i don't either i don't either so it's like, okay sure yeah, yeah exactly so, yeah it was it was loads of good advice from her um also, uh, I'm an energetic person, and she's like, just slow down. If you think you're going slow, just go a little bit slower, especially with the heavy stuff for, you know. And on camera, again, the camera's very slow. It's a slow zoom in on you. Can't move like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, definitely. When you look back the, at that, your character of Rick, because there's mm. everybody, all the Ricks come on different times, how yeah. do you describe your Rick? I don't think I asked you that last time. So I'm like, I just thought about that now. I was like, oh, no, that's a new, I like that one. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, a little bit lost, I think. Mm -hmm. I think as the character of Rick developed, for me at least, in the beginning, you know, with the confusion of the baby and the, the certainty, I'm going to stay with Amber and then the baby's gone and how could you do this? But, you know, the love, there's a lot of confusion. And to top it off, Rick is like 18, 19 years old. You know, and then more children come. And I think by the time, you know, later, my later time there, I really feel like um, Rick had grown up. And I felt like I grew up a lot with Rick. He was more in the family business and he was more um, strong in his wants and needs as a character. But in the beginning, he was very, you know, his mom was bringing in girlfriends and he's enticed. And, but of course, he's a teenage boy. What's he going to do? You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. Big girls, he's sure. Why not? Okay, I'll be here. Yeah, but I think Rick went from being a little bit lost, kind of trying to find his way in life, and then he went off to run Forrester Creations in Paris. And I think he came back a much stronger man from what I've seen from, from, you know, from Kyle playing it and from how Jacob was working with it. He's, Rick seems very strong. Well, it's funny. I, you, you're the third Kyle I know. I mean, third Kyle. Third uh, Rick I know. I know Kyle. I know Kyle. <laughs> Rick. I know, I know, I know Kyle, I know, and I know Jacob, and so you're like, yeah. and so, and you have a, yeah, you have this, this one little strange kind of Kyle Louder Days Are Lives connection, because you told me, I want you to tell yes. me what's been out there, that you actually auditioned for Brady Black on Days? Yeah, I tested for Brady Black on Days, like, a few months before I went and tested for Rick on Bull and Beautiful. I don't know if that's connected, <laughs> like, but, yeah, it was just a, a small world, and I maybe, like I Kyle think someone... 
And then did someone did someone play Brady Black before Kyle? Good question. I feel like there was like a child who played. I feel like, I feel like it got aged or, or teenagers. teenager. So yeah, yeah, I think it was a teenager, and then they aged him, and then he came in. Yeah, they and did. I auditioned for the teenager. I mean, I was yeah, just eighteen at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Because he came, because he came back with a vengeance, so to speak, like against the family, and I'm all this stuff, and then oh lordy, then, then you, but you were on Full the Beautiful, then he's like, but then he went on to play Rick. Yep. Then he played beautiful. Rick, and then Jacob came back. It's musical yeah. chairs. You just never know. <laughs> You're going to get a group, a small group of people who are experts at playing Rick. <laughs> but, I, but I feel like it's almost like, um, like theater in some way. It's just like there are folks yeah. in certain roles. They get yeah. multiple places to the same role. And yeah, you guys, yeah, yeah. Played them. you guys all played them. You guys were all yeah. fun with it. Yeah. And, and it's a, I think it's, it's been fun to see everyone's different take on the role. You know, I mean, there's similarities because the character is the character. But seeing how people played it differently is certainly very interesting. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Uh-oh. <clears throat> and where where is your Emmy? Where do you put it? Where do you put it? That's how you put it. My Emmy's out. in my office. <laughs> I love it. I, I love that. It's so funny. And and so when you look at it now, I mean, what yeah. what, is it, what is it? What kind of place does it play in your life? Or your um, you know, it 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 brings back amazing memories. Uh, it reminds me of a really happy time. You know, um, a time of of gratitude and and surprise and and almost naivety where I was young it was all so exciting and I look at that and I can go straight back to that moment it's a moment I'll never forget is standing on stage at Radio City and just looking at all those people and just taking a brief second and I, I really tried to take a mental snapshot of that because that'll I'll probably again never happen again for me it's standing in Radio City Music Hall looking at all those people um and it it reminds me that I I uh I'm okay at what I do, you know, it, yeah. I, can, I can look at it if I'm feeling down or if I'm feeling questioning or whatever, and I can say, no, no, when I work hard at this, when I put my heart and soul into it, I'm good at it. I bet. You are good yeah. at it. You're good at it. Thank you. You're good. Um, so, what, so what's going on these days? You're, you're in Colorado oh. now because of, of, of the Rona. Yes. Uh, but other than that, you, you say you want to come back, so you say you're just a documentary, you're, just, you're doing some stuff, right? Yes, Rona chased us out of LA, so now we're chilling here. Uh, my wife, she's uh, she's incredibly beautiful Israeli woman. She is a television writer, and uh, so we're writing together. We just write stuff together. Um, but also cars, as you can see. Yeah, see this that. is only two of them on the property. There's many, many more. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love, I love it. I love it. Cars are like my biggest passion. Uh, my dad read me Road and Track as my bedtime stories. I I would save my money working so I could buy. 1948 GMCs, right? So that's like, that's my jazz. That's my thing. And yes, yes. so I'm doing a car show. I'm, I'm deciding I want to make a documentary as a first episode and like episode, bring it to festivals maybe. And so it's an edit right now. And it's about this place here in Colorado called the Rambler Ranch. Um, and this, this gentleman owns over 800 AMC Nash and Rambler cars, which is already strange. I mean, yeah, they're right. obscure cars and he has the largest collection in the world. And it's incredible. It's not a field full of cars. He has museums and oh. and what he does for people, you know, he, he changes people's lives. It's He uses the cars and the ranch to change people's lives. And so that's what I'm going to highlight. Um, I'll let you know when it's ready because yeah, please, please. I, I would love some people to check it out. I'll set it up for streaming or something, obviously, eventually. But it's, uh, it's going to be really cool. And I think it'll be – I'm going to be very proud of it because it's something I'm working on. It's from point one to the finish and I'm seeing it all, all I'm going to wrap it all up and uh, and with daytime with soaps for instance you don't usually get to do that you know maybe Catherine Kelly Lang she can carry Brooke for the length but I think so. Rick's, there's already been three you know what I mean it's you don't yeah. carry it in daytime so something from beginning to end is a very exciting thing for me I think that's a good point actually very good point. yeah um and it'll, it'll feel you. good it sounds good that's a really good point no, I feel like it'll be, it'll be good. It'll be good. Too. I'm very excited. You know, I'll promote it for you. You know, I kind of thought it was good. Thank you. <laughs> well, I just want you to see it. <laughs> I, do want, I do want to see it too. I do want to see it. So, one of the last questions I'm going to ask is, what what do you think? What do you think about Bold and Beautiful, which is the youngest of all the soaps, has mm. lasted 33 years, I think, at this point or whatever, it's gone on the air. Yeah, like yeah. 33. How do you feel about being part of that legacy? You, you actually are a part of it. I'm absolutely honored. Um, what the Bell family has managed to create with the Bold and Beautiful is something that will probably never be seen again in television. 
uh, in the way that it's, it's longevity and it's reach. You know, we have some American soaps that have been on for a very long time, but haven't had the reach. I think the combination that's been created with Bold and Beautiful, it really hit it right on the head on what people want to see, the, the glamour, the drama. And that's why it relates worldwide. You know, uh, everyone can relate to fashion and drama. And I, frankly, sometimes it's fun to say, oh, look at those rich people and their problems. <laughs> Come yes, on, you know? It is, yes. It's that, fun. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it is fun. So you're right. Yeah. But I, I, being a part of that, having been a part of the Bold and Beautiful and, and its incredible stories, uh, is, I'm truly honored to have been a part of that. And, and I will always, always, always carry those memories with me. That's very nice. That's very nice. Thanks for being on the show, my friend. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Tell folks out there where they can find you on social media if they want to. All right. You can find me on Instagram, Justin underscore Torkelson. I, I just joined TikTok. <laughs> what are you doing? My wife harassed me into joining TikTok, and oh I, my I haven't, I haven't put you. anything up yet. But it, okay. it's justin.tork. Well, look out. Yeah. <laughs> I will. No, I, seriously. <laughs> Justin Torkelson official I'm a, I'm a, on Facebook. I'm a, I'm a star on there. I'm a star on there. So you'll you'll see my stuff. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. I need I need to start. I'm 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 getting excited. Social media, man. It's it's a new thing for this old guy. <laughs> oh, trust me, I understand. All the time. I, I I understand. I'm trying to hold it down. I'm trying to hold it down. Like a right. Exactly. Exactly. It does work, folks. I'm just telling you, it does work. It does. <laughs> and I'm James. But thank I'm you. James. And thank you. Yeah, thanks for being on the show, of course. Anytime. Thank you. And I'm James Lodge Jr. You can follow me where all James Lodge Jr. is sold at James Lodge Jr. and all social media platforms. And I'm on TikTok too at James Lodge Jr. You can follow me there too. My craziness that's going on there. Um, and uh, follow this podcast it's everywhere where streaming services are. And it's on YouTube on, at my channel, JLJ Media. Everyone, please stay safe and sane while we're going through this kind of strange time period. And take care.